Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Kilwa for U4 1.35 Domination. So Kilwa is a nation that starts off over in the East Africa region controlling most of the Zanzibar trade node and in my opinion it's one of the most powerful, one of the most rich and one of the most underrated nations in EU4 because this starting position right here as the dominant power in this region enables us to expand super quickly in our neighbors to the south and in Madagascar and then further up north and with these amazing Kilwa national ideas that focus on navies, trade and colonization we'll be able to expand pretty much anywhere in the world that we want. Q1 ideas start off with plus 25% naval force limit, which is super, super powerful for a nation such as us, plus 20% ship trade power, plus 10% global trade power, then we have plus 20% colonial range and plus 25% trade range, a double idea right here, plus one government thingy, plus one diplo rep, and minus 10% trade company investment cost, another double idea, a 5% idea discount, yearly inflation reduction, and monthly gold inflation minus 20%, which is amazing for all the gold miners that we're going to control, plus one merchant, and minus 10% dev discount, so those national ideas paired with this really really good mission trade here will enable us to rapidly expand as Kilwa, create a massive trade and maybe even colonial empire and take advantage of the, all the amazing gold mines that we start off with and the gold mines that we're gonna spawn so sit back relax and learn how to play one of the most underrated nations in EU4. All right, all right, here we are as Kilwa, and we do start off with a subject so far right here, which of course we are gonna be annexing pretty soon. And we also start off as an Eastern plutocracy government reform, which basically means we're sort of a merchant nation, which gives us an additional merchant. And speaking of merchants, one is collecting in Zanzibar and the other is transferring from Zambezia to Zanzibar. You'll notice that we have two free guys, but they can't reach any other trade node right now. So more on them later. First, we're gonna go into our decisions Right here and adopt the title of Khalifa and enforce religious unity. Then we're gonna go into our estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the ulama religious state and clerical advisory council along with religious diplomats and clerical education. Then we're gonna give the emirs primacy of the emirs, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. We're gonna give the merchant guilds land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the merchant guilds. And then you need to decide if you want to convert the provinces that you're going to conquer if you do want to convert them then go ahead and do it you can go ahead and give the ulama enforced unity of faith however if you don't want to be bothered with converting provinces over to sunni you can give the dimi guaranteed dimi autonomy which makes every non-muslim province basically all the fetishist provinces not count towards religious unity of course later if you change your mind you can change it if you're a newer player i do recommend giving out guaranteed dimi autonomy which is what we're going to do in this guide and then we're going to seize land Next, we do need to sort of kickstart our mission tree. This branch right here, along with this one, focuses on colonizing and expanding over in India and in Southeast Asia. More on that later. This branch right here focuses on Madagascar. This branch over here focuses on us going north. And this branch sort of right here focuses on us conquering our southern neighbors and then expanding into the Cape down here. So to get started with this mission tree, we first need to annex Sofala so we can get claims on these guys down here. But of course, we don't want to go ahead and wait 10 years. So we're going to get a little bit ahead of our mission tree by starting to spy on Makua. Then we also need to focus on our navy by doing these two missions right here. Of course, this one we're going to be doing later. We don't have the money or the force limit for 25 light ships, so we're just going to focus on the transports right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these 12 light ships right here and tell them to protect trade in Zanzibar and go home during war. And then we're going to build some more ships. First, we're going to build four transports just like this, and then you can build about five galleys just like that. Next, with this other free diplomat, you can start improving relations with Sofala and then royal marrying them, and then it's time to set some rivals. Go ahead and rival the only nations that are available to you, which in my case are Ajuran, Mutapa, and Mombasa. Next, we do need to rearrange our army a little bit, so just go ahead and hire two infantry regiments just like this, and later, when we start our first war, we're also gonna get the free company up and running, even though it'll take us over force limit. As Kilwa at the start, we can definitely afford it. We already start off with a gold mine right here. We're gonna get one more from our subject and three more from Mutapa and Butua over here. And later, we're gonna conquer even the Ethiopian ones, and we're gonna spawn some more down here. With all of that done, you can go ahead and hire some advisors as well. I recommend a yearly inflation reduction admin advisor if you have him. I don't, so I'm just gonna get this prestige guy. Then get an improved relations or diplo rep level one dip advisor. I have this improved relations guy, so I am gonna hire him. And then get a morale discipline for defense or manpower mill advisor. I have a discipline guy, so I am gonna hire him. Now it's time to wait around for these boats to finish building and for us to get a claim on Makua. 
most likely Maku over here, they're gonna ally Mutapa, and you're gonna have to fight two or three of these nations over here. But that's not a problem at all, because we start off with Miltech 3, and they're Miltech 2. And by the time we declare our war, we may even be at 4, while they're still at 2. For now at the start, to save some money, you can go ahead and lower army maintenance, and just chill. I do also recommend immediately converting Zanzibar. There is no need to ally any nation for now. Later on, when you move up north, you could get an alliance with Ethiopia to help you beat these guys up, or an alliance with Adal for the same reason to help you beat these guys up, or maybe you can get someone up here once again to help you beat these guys up. But for now, no need for alliances at all. Once you've gotten a claim on Makua, it is time to get ready for our first war. And like I said, Makua is most likely gonna ally Mutapa, however, in my game, they haven't. But it's not a big deal no matter who they ally, because like I said, we have superior Miltech and we can very easily beat these guys up. So before you get ready to declare on Makua, no matter who they're allied to, you're gonna white piece them. Don't do anything to Makua's allies because we wanna fight them as soon as possible. So before we declare on Makua, you can go ahead and raise army maintenance and then go ahead and hire the free company as well right down here this will take us over first limit but don't worry about it and you can also take your main army hire a general or you can also give your ruler mill command as well since he's not that good and you can go ahead and send your army down here in preparation for the war. Because at this point, your boats will have finished building, you will have 10 transports, and once you hire the free company, you'll also be at 100% of your force limit, then you can go ahead and take the mission Prepare the Invasion, which gives us a perma claim on the entirety of Madagascar. But we're not going to worry about this right now. First, we want to deal with a couple of these guys down here, or maybe all of the guys down here, and then we're going to go for Madagascar. No one else is going to conquer this, so we're not really in a hurry to conquer it. And once your morale is up, you can go ahead and declare war on Makua for the conquest of whatever you made a claim on, and like I said, white piece all of their allies. This will be a very easy war with the Mildek advantage. While you're in this war, you should go ahead and start spying on Mutapa. Once you've white pieced all of Makua's allies, it's time to go ahead and peace out, and of course, we are going to be full annexing Makua. After you wrapped up your first war, it's time to wait for Miltech 4. Right now, I've just gotten Miltech 4, and once you do, it's gonna be time for your second war, which is gonna be versus one of the Madagascar nations. As you know, we did get claims on all of them, so you're simply gonna look for the easiest nation to fight. Let's see Sakalava right here, they're allied to Antamoro, but actually Antamoro won't help them, so that's perfect for me. Betsy Mr. Raka right here, they don't even have any allies, so it'll typically be pretty easy to fight these guys. At most, they'll have only one other ally, once again, in Madagascar. So, simply go ahead and declare on whichever of these nations is the easiest to fight. I'm gonna go ahead and declare on Sakalava. Before you do that though, make sure to assign an admiral to your 5 galley 10 transport fleet, just like that, and you can go ahead and put them out here. And there we go, I'm gonna declare on Sakalava for the conquest of that province right there. Right off the bat right here, you are gonna wanna focus on dip. We will be annexing our subject and we'll be diving five gold mines, so we definitely need those dip points and our starting ruler sucks in Diplo skill. Once you've wrapped up your war with a nation in Madagascar, or maybe two if they were allies, you can go ahead and full annex all of them. Keep in mind that once you start conquering Madagascar, you will have to move your troops back and forth quite a bit right here, which isn't going to be too annoying, but it still is because you're going to have a lot of rebellions. Once you've wrapped up your second war, the Renaissance should have spawned, and you should go ahead and activate the Encourage Development State Edict in your capital state of the central Swahili coast, just like that, and you should develop your capital enough to spawn the Renaissance. Make sure to not dev your capital more than 10 production though. So we're going to boost dip only up to 10, and then you can boost more in admin and mill. So there we go. I'm going to start devving right here just like that. And then once I hit 15, I can also expand infrastructure. You should do the same once you hit 15 dev. Right now, you may be losing some money because we're over army and naval force limit. Don't worry, you can lose as much money as you want in this early portion of the game. As soon as we develop these gold mines a little bit, we're going to be swimming in ducats and you're going to have more money than you know what to do with it. Additionally, you could make your capital kill while even cheaper to dev if you bump it up to a level 2 center of trade before you start devving it. Once 10 years have passed since the start of the game, you should go ahead and give the emirs the emirs integration policy just like this, and then you can go ahead and annex your starting subject, Sofala. Once you annex Sofala, you should go ahead and full state this, and you will have received another gold mine right here, the one in Sofala, which of course later we are going to be devving as well. But more importantly, after you do that, you will be able to take the mission Annex Sofala, which gives us perma claims on the entirety of Mutapa and their vassal Butwa if they still exist. And after this, you can go ahead and declare on them too. By this point, they may have a couple of rivals. In my case, they're allied to Tumbuku right here, which I already fought, and then to Lunda, which is somewhere over here. But either way, no matter who they're allied to, this is once again going to be extremely easy, because at this point, you're probably two Miltex ahead of them. 
so they're simply gonna go ahead and crush them. Right after you annex Sofala, you should inherit their army as well. You could keep this army around, even though you're way over force limit to help you in this war, but of course, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I deleted half of it, and now I'm gonna declare on Mutapa for the conquest of this province, and their ally won't even join. While you're in the war with Mutapa, you should go ahead and start spying on both of these nations right here. For your tier 2 government reform, in my opinion, you have three options. You could go strengthen noble privileges, because we could use that manpower, and the nobles aren't really influential anyway for our country. Then, of course, you could go compromise with the nobility, which is, of course, the new best pick for the tier 2 government reform. But, because we're an eastern plutocracy, you could also enforce trader privileges. This doesn't give the merchants any more influence, but it does give you plus 5% trade power and plus 30% trade range which will enable you to reach these trade nodes up here right now in the early game all three of those are really valid options you can go with whichever one you want you won't make a mistake with either one of them in my game right here since in the early part we're conquering a whole lot and we will be needing the manpower i'm gonna go strengthen noble privileges but like i said all three of these are very good if Mutapa has allied someone over here, you may not be able to go and siege them down, in which case you'll just have to wait for them to unconditionally surrender, just like I'm doing right now. And now that I have enough war score, I'm gonna peace out Mutapa even though they haven't unconditionally surrendered. When fighting Mutapa, you're gonna wanna full annex them along with their vassal if it still exists, and of course take as much money as you can. And that's your war with Mutapa done. Now you have three additional gold mines. Now most of these will be pretty low dev, especially Zimbabwe right here since it has an event where it goes down to three dev, but of course you'll be devving these up in no time. No need to rush anything here, just dev it whenever you have the points. Once you do full annex Mutapa and their subject Butwa, you will be able to take the mission the Gold of Zimbabwe, which enables controlled gold mining and we gain a conquistador with 50 tradition. This conquistador will help us explore some of these areas down here and over here if you want to as well. And the opinion on the controlled gold mining privilege is pretty divided in the community as we can see gold has a minus 75 percent chance monthly to deplete and you get a less inflation as well way less but there's also 15 percent less goods produced which is pretty powerful in my opinion if you're a newer player and if you're struggling with inflation i do recommend getting controlled gold mining but if you don't keep in mind that you will have to buy down inflation about once a year now that we've dealt with Mutapa and Butwa, it's time to core these provinces up and chill for a little bit before we continue our conquests over in Madagascar and in these nations right here. You should spy on these guys because we're not getting claims on them. And by the way, there's no need to worry about coalitions or anything like that. Right now, I do have the range to send an additional merchant over to the Gulf of Aden. He's transferring over to Zanzibar. Right now, I took out a couple of more loans and I can go ahead and embrace the Renaissance. After you get that conquistador from this mission right here, I recommend putting him in charge of a 10k army because there are a lot of provinces right here with quite a few natives as we can see, and then just telling him to go to all of these provinces and pretty much explore them manually. Once you've cored everything up over here and explored everything down here, you can go ahead and continue your conquest in Madagascar by declaring on the easiest nation that you can. I'm gonna fight these guys. At this point, I've also devved this gold mine in Sofala up to 10 production as well. Now we have 2 out of 5 gold mines up to 10. Next, of course, are these, and I've already stated everything here. Once you get the money and the tech, you should start building up marketplaces first. We do control a very valuable trade node over here, so go ahead and start building them in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces. Now I've wrapped up my war with Mahafali, and I'll full annex them, and since it was a war versus a 1 province miner only, I'm also gonna declare on Antemoro. And now that I defeated Antemoro as well, I'll be full annexing them too. Once there's only one nation left in Madagascar, you can go back over here and fight whichever nation is located here. And once you gain a big enough control of Zanzibar, you'll notice this right here popping up propagate religion. This means that you can use your merchant to change the religion of these provinces instead of an actual missionary. You can do this if you want to, there's no need to do it if you gave out guaranteed demi autonomy to the demi. It's totally up to you. Of course, if you want to convert provinces, definitely go ahead and do it. Around the 1460s is when you'll want to decrease autonomy because it will have been increasing by now due to the low crown land percentage that we start off with, and of course you are going to want to seize land whenever all of your estates are above 50 loyalty. Let's see in my case, I can't seize right now without any of them rising up, but if I go ahead and summon the diet, all of them get above 50, and then we can go ahead and seize. We do want to get above 30 crownland whenever possible, and of course you will be doing that by conquest, by lowering autonomy, and by seizing land. 
Right now, I'm gonna focus on deving Zimbabwe up to 10 production as well. A good thing about Kilwa here is that you can focus on developing your provinces and gold pretty much all the time in the early game because we don't have any powerful rivals next to us that we need to stay up to date on tech with, even though we will be doing that either way, so there's no like threat of the Mamluks or the Ottomans, which means we need to use points on tech and stuff like that. You can afford to be behind a few levels in tech compared to like the Ottomans or something like that in, in order to focus on deving. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and declare on whoever is located here. While in this war, I've also devved Zimbabwe up to 10 production as well, actually without even activating Encourage Development, so definitely a few wasted points there on my part. But now it's time to do these two right here. While fighting Moravi, I'm gonna spy on Tumbuka as you can see in order to fight them later. And now that Moravi will accept, I'll finally go ahead and peace out and full annex them. We're full annexing whoever we're fighting up to this point. For your naval doctrine as Kilwa, I recommend taking shipboarding for a chance to capture enemy ships plus 33%. Once you get 25 light ships, which I do have, and keep in mind I only built three of them, the rest I just got from fighting these guys over here and capturing their ships, you will be able to take the mission to establish a trade fleet, which gives us 20 navy tradition and permaclaims on these areas right here. Soon we'll start focusing on these nations, we'll do that only after wrapping up everyone over here and everyone in Madagascar. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and finish off the remaining nations that are located right here. In my game, I'm gonna declare on Tubuka right here, even though they're like Tubuha. Right now, I'm also deving my final gold mine that I need to dev up to 10. Since I'm just waiting for Tumbuka to unconditionally surrender, I'll also be declaring on Betsy Misaraka. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking Expanded Royal Court. As we can see, only about 30 years into the game, we're making about 30 ducats from gold. And that's just from these 5 gold mines. Later, we do have a chance to spawn even more down here and over here, as you can see according to the provinces, even though the chance isn't very high. And, of course, we could be getting the 2 more, from Ethiopia later on. Now that I've defeated Betsy Misraka, I'll of course be full annexing them, and with that, I've wrapped up every nation over in Madagascar. By around the 1480s, give or take, you should have done the same. After you do that, you will be able to take the mission Invade Madagascar, where we gain local missionary strength plus 2% and local goods produced plus 0.25. Pretty powerful. This is just for Madagascar. Whenever you have the spare Diplo points, I do recommend accepting Shona culture as well. Now that Tumbuka has surrendered, I'll also be full annexing them as well. And around the same time you beat up the Madagascar guys, you should have wrapped up these guys over here as well. Perfect. Now we're done with the starting nations in the two starting regions that we were supposed to fight. And of course, by this point, we do have flames up here, which means our conquests will continue this way. Either way, after we're done with this, you don't want to continue with conquering just right away. First, we want to focus on getting to Admin Tech 5 if we haven't already, so we can pick up our first idea group. After you've built marketplaces in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces and churches in every province that will give you more than 0.1 ducats per month, you should focus your money on upgrading centers of trade. Of course, if you can't upgrade a center of trade in a certain province, make sure to develop it up to 10 so then you can upgrade it. When you get Admin Tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group and as Kilwa, I feel like you have two possible routes that you can take. You could either go the colonization route, which of course the game sort of wants us to do due to this branch of the missions right here, which requires us to go to India and to Southeast Asia and to China, and of course due to this national idea right here, and the fact that we also gain a colonizer from here, or you could go the non-colonial route, which of course doesn't focus on expanding in this region, at least through colonization, even though you're still gonna colonize with the colonists you get from your missions down here, you won't really be focusing on that. And of course, if you do go the colonial route, you are gonna open up with exploration ideas and then expansion ideas so you can get the Southeast Asia faster. But if not, I recommend opening up with quality ideas. This will buff up the quality of our army significantly, giving us combat ability and discipline, and it'll also buff up our boats as well, which we will be using quite a lot. And a very underrated idea right here, naval attrition minus 25%, is especially super important for us as Kilwa. And of course, the morale and the ship durability is great too. So, if you're going colonial for your first idea group, exploration. If you're not going colonial, then quality. In this guide right here, I am gonna take exploration just to showcase that branch of playing as Kilwa. Of course, if you want exploration, you're not gonna shift focus. If you want quality, you are gonna defocus or focus on mill. If you did open up with exploration, I recommend detaching three light ships from your trade fleet right here, docking them, 
and then recruiting an explorer for them, and you can simply start exploring. If you did go colonial as Kilwa, you should of course select your native policy. You can go with whichever one you want. I recommend this one for newer players since you won't have to deal with native uprisings, but it is the slowest, or you can go with native repression. We're gonna have to go ahead and beat up the natives using this button right here and using some mill points, but you will be colonizing faster. It is totally up to you which one you go with. I'm gonna go with the native repression policy. And with your first colonizer, if you went to exploration, you're gonna start going for these islands right here, so we can basically prevent Europeans from going this way. However, if you got your colonists from your missions and you're not going colonial, well, you're just going to focus on this right here and then these provinces over here. It's totally up to you. I'm going to send my first colonist to the Comoros Islands right now. Once you've dealt with everyone over here and started your first idea group, you can go ahead and start fighting the nations up here. Once again, even though you may be fighting quite a few of them, these wars will be easy since you're technologically superior. Of course, you're going to go along in order, fight Mombasa first, in my case they're allied to Ajuran, which I'm only going to white piece since I want to fight them either way after I fight Melindi and Pate. Keep in mind that fighting some of these guys over here might be annoying due to the fact that they will walk around you and pop out in the south of your nation. Eventually, you will get enough money to start building the monuments over here, and of course you do start off with the Kilwa city at tier 2, which is pretty powerful, but you should also go ahead and build up the city of Kami in Zimbabwe. At tier 1, it's not that good for us, but at tier 2 and tier 3, it does give us a very nice 5% tech discount. Now that I defeated Mombasa, I will be full annexing them, you'll be doing the same. As soon as you're ready, you can go ahead and declare on Melindi. Once you hit admin deck 6, the most important thing to do is to build workshops, especially in the ivory provinces, because we do need to have 5 workshops in ivory producing provinces in order to complete this mission, which isn't that relevant, but we do need it to complete this mission right here, which will create a colony in the Cape, which is down here, and give us a colonist, along with plus 25% global settler increase for 50 years, which is really 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 strong in my case I already have one workshop since Mombasa has already built one but either way go ahead and build production buildings in all of the high value trade good provinces that you own when you do start colonizing whether with exploration ideas or with the colonists that you get from your missions you can go ahead and give the merchant guilds grant new world charters when you have some downtime because we're gonna colonize down here if you went with the native repression policy go ahead and do this in every province down here so you don't bother with it later of course, if we went with native coexistence, there's no need to do this. Once you build the necessary production buildings, you will be able to take this mission right here, which gives you some cash, but more importantly, you'll be able to take this mission right here, which gives the benefits that I already mentioned. And there we go, a colony is starting to form right here in the Cape. Additionally, you'll be able to take the mission Expand Kilwa, which gives the province of Kilwa plus one possible number of buildings plus one and minus 25% local gold depletion chance, which is super strong. Additionally, once you gain your second colonist or your first one if you didn't go colonial, you are going to want to start colonizing everything down here. So I'm going to send mine to this province right here, which is pretty nice. It's a center of trade and it's in Zanzibar. No matter if we went colonial or not with exploration, with this colonist, you're going to colonize down here. Whenever you're ready, keep fighting these nations and keep pushing north. Melindy is allied to these two guys, which may seem powerful, but it's still a very easy war. Now Melindy has unconditionally surrendered, I'll be full annexing them, you'll be doing the same. If you find yourself struggling with GovCap before you can build the GovCap buildings, go ahead and give some of these guys, preferably the Dimi since they have the least privileges, one of the land rights privileges. Right now I've also started colonizing Ile de Bourbon. Now to continue my wars, I'll be declaring on Pate. And now I'll be full annexing Pate as well. Once your colony over here is done, keep colonizing everything along the coast until you reach the Cape. We do have a mission right here which requires us to have the Cape connected over to mainland Kilwa, so we gain some nice bonuses over there and further permaclaims up here. Either way, once you wipe out the two or three small guys located over here, go ahead and declare on Ajuran. If they haven't expanded, you should be able to full annex them. If they have expanded, focus on taking as much as you can, primarily focusing on the coastline first. I just have to scornfully insult them first since they have good relations, and now we can go ahead and declare. For your tier 4 government reform, if you decided to convert things that you've conquered, you should go with strength and the ulama. If you haven't decided to convert things and you've gone ahead and given the dimi the privilege right here that doesn't give us religious disunity penalties, then you can go ahead and give them maintain balance of power. That's precisely what I've done, I'm not converting anything, so I am gonna give them maintain balance of power. You basically have the conversion and non-conversion routes. And like I said, once you defeated Ajuran, if they haven't expanded, full annex them. If they have expanded, like they have in my game, focus on the coast. This is what I'm going to take in my first war, and then I'm going to take this if they haven't been annexed by that point in my second war. 
Once you do take this province from Rajuran, or whoever has it, you will be able to take the mission Conquer the Coastline, which gives us army tradition and further claims up here. And once you conquer some of these claims up here, you'll also be able to take the mission Conquer Mogadishu, where this event happens. Basically, we lose some production in Mogadishu, and we gain production in Kilwa. We also gain 100 prosperity in the central Swahili coast, and we gain some money. Pretty nice mission. Once you do conquer these things over here, the next missions take us further this way, so we don't get any claims on stuff that we want to conquer over here in the Ethiopia trade node and pretty much in the Horn of Africa region either. So once you gain these provinces here, start spying on whoever these next guys are, probably Adal, Wursangali, Ethiopia, because you won't be getting claims on them. If you didn't take the controlled gold mining estate privilege, make sure to check your gold mines from time to time if they're still at 10 production. If they're not, go ahead and bump them back up to 10. And by this point from colonizing, some of you will have spawned gold in some of these provinces over here. In my game I haven't, I've only gotten some tropical wood and some grain right here. But maybe I'll have more luck in next provinces. By now, you should be running level 2 or maybe even level 3 advisor. Right around the 1500s, if you've gone with the colonization route, you will want to start building up a bunch more galleys and transports to your main fleet right here, which got destroyed so I'm building it back up right now. But we will need those boats to help us deal with these nations down here and basically to move around troops. For your second idea group, if you opened up with exploration, of course you're gonna take expansion. If you opened up with quality, you should go for economic. Even though economic isn't that good right now, it's super important to us as a gold producing nation. All of these uh, tax and production modifiers are great along with the interest per annum, the gold depletion chance, and the inflation reduction from loan repayment, and the yearly inflation reduction generally along with the goods produced plus 10% which is super powerful, and the merchant, everything will help us out a ton for a nation in a position and in a way that is played, such as Kilwa. So, either exploration expansion, or quality economic. Once you're the strongest trade power in the Gulf of Aden or have 50% trade control, which I do right now, you will be able to take this mission right here, which gives us some trade bonuses along with a claim, not a perma claim, on every coastal center of trade in the Gujarat and Coromandel trade nodes, which are pretty much all of the centers of trade that you see right here. You don't have to take this mission right away. Of course, it could go away, but you'll get it back once you have more control over here. But this mission basically prepares you for your conquest in India. You don't have to go down this route if you don't want to. Generally, if you're not going the colonization route, you don't want to enter India, you want to focus on things over here, but I do recommend saving it until you're ready to declare on these guys over here. And by around the time colonialism comes around, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as Kilwa, pretty much the most powerful nation over in East Africa. And right at the start, we focused on completing some missions right here, annexing our subject, and then pushing into the nations that were located over here, mainly Makua and Mutapa down here, and then later on the small nations that are located around Lake Malawi. And in the meantime, we pummeled the nations over in Madagascar, thanks to this mission right here, which gave us perma claims on Madagascar. And after you took care of all of the nations over here and over here, and by this point, the Game, you should have taken out the entire coastline over in the Horn of Africa region. Of course, by playing a little faster, you could own all of this by now. Maybe pushed into some of these nations in the Congo Basin and in the Lake Victoria region by colonizing a province over here, but I don't think that's too relevant for now because we're not really focused on this region over here. But after nabbing all of these guys down here, all of Madagascar, and all of these guys up here, the smaller guys in Ajran, basically you're going to continue to expand in the same regions we've already been expanding in, which is pretty much going to be this region over here for now. The Ethiopia Ethiopia trade node and basically the Horn of Africa region right here. Of course, if you did go with the colonial route like I did in this guide right here, you should have focused on colonizing these islands right here with the colonists that you got from exploration. And then after you're done with these islands, you should hop and skip your way over to Southeast Asia and start colonizing the uncolonized provinces over here before fighting these guys over here. But either way, if you didn't go the colonial route, you still got a colonist from your missions right here, which you will have for 50 years. And with that colonist, of course, an automatic colony will start over here that you can't send your colonizer to, but you should start colonizing your way down these provinces to basically connect the cape over to your mainland provinces right here so you can unlock this mission right here. And then once you're done with the coastal provinces, you can either focus on the remaining provinces in the Cape of Good Hope trade node, or you could focus on some things over here to get yourself connected to the Congo guys and to the Lake Victoria guys, or you could focus on closing up these gaps of uncolonized provinces in this region right here. Either way, after you connect these provinces, what you do with the colonists from your mission 
positions is totally up to you. And of course, later, when you do gain a border with these guys, you will continue to expand into them if you want to, even though, like I said, that's not too relevant. This is because we're mostly focusing on this trade right here. And if you went colonial, we're also going to focus on these things over here. And since Zanzibar is such a powerful trade node, it has four trade nodes entering it and only one exiting it. If we control the entirety of the Cape of Good Hope, that means we basically turn Zanzibar into an end node, which means no trade can escape from it, which means you can route all of this amazing trade, whether you're expanding only in Africa and in the Middle East or in India and Southeast Asia as well. We can route all of it over to Zanzibar. So that's why if you're not going colonial, you'll continue to expand up here. And if you want to over here, but if you are going colonial, you should definitely focus on colonizing provinces over here and fighting the Southeast Asia guys, focusing on the Malacca, the Malaccas, the Philippines trade nodes. And of course, if you want, you can go ahead and enter India and route all of that trade to the Indian nodes over to the Gulf of Aden and then to Zanzibar. But of course, if you're not going for India at all, you can route straight from Malacca over into the Cape of Good Hope. And you could make this your end node instead of Zanzibar, or you don't even have to, you could just collect over here. The choices are totally up to you. But for now, we're pretty much expanding up here in the north. Once you wrap up some of these smaller guys, you will focus on the larger guys, which will most likely be Ethiopia and Adal in your game. If not, it's very rare that the Mamluks expand down here anyway, so you probably won't even need to fight them for some of these regions over here. You could, of course, fight them if you want to push over into Alexandria, maybe conquer all of Africa, if that's your goal or something like that. But generally, there is no need as Kilwa to go further north than the Gulf of Aden and Ethiopia trade nodes. You're really not that interested in Alexandria, Basra, and Hormuz. If you're going for India, you're just going to get all of the Indian nodes right here, along with Burma and Siam and Southeast Asia. And you could even establish a colonial nation over in Australia and become sort of an Indian Ocean Empire. And of course, if you did go exploration expansion, you're mostly going to use these idea groups to focus on this region right here. But if you wrap that up and if you still have exploration expansion, if you haven't abandoned them, you could of course focus on establishing colonial nations in the New World and then get into some conflicts with the traditional colonial powers such as Portugal, Spain, and maybe even England and France. But that's how your expansion is going to go after this point. Of course, by this point, we haven't only been focusing on expanding because Kilwa, like I said at the start of the video, is one of the richest nations in EU4, and you'll be definitely utilizing that to the max. By this point in the game, around 50 to 60 years, you should have been building a ton of buildings. How? Of course, by devving up your gold mines, which all of them should have been devved up by now. Kilwa at the start when we spawned the Renaissance, Sofala after that, when we annex Sofala, and then these three later right here of course after you annex Mutapa. Some of them are devved more than 10 in my game right here but that's mostly due to events happening in Zimbabwe and in Kilwa which has boosted the production development but generally you don't want to go more than 10 on these unless you've given out the controlled gold mining privilege which like I said newer players should do whereas more seasoned players shouldn't because you'll be lowering inflation all the time. And of course, due to all of this money that we've gotten from gold, you should have been building so many buildings. You should have a marketplace in every center of trade and estuary province, and all of those centers of trade should be upgraded to level 2 at least. And of course, when you have the money, you should bump them up to level 3. You can have as many level 3 centers of trade as you have merchants. I have 4 merchants right now, which means I can have 4 level 3 centers of trade. And there we go. There's one right there in my capital of Kilwa. Of course, we're not only focusing on this, you should have built workshops in all the high-value trade good provinces, starting up with ivory, of course, for that one mission, churches in all of the provinces that give you more than 0.1 ducats a month, which are those three that I just built churches in right now. And of course, you could focus on some army buildings as well, and later on manufactories, once you get to the good manufactories that give you lots of income. I generally like to build manufactories in every province that gives me more than 0.4 ducats per month, which is going to be pretty much every province from here up to here. And by this point of the game, you should have gotten pretty far along with your mission tree. Of course, if you're not colonizing, if you didn't go exploration expansion, that you don't really care for these branches down here in the mission tree. These take you out of Africa and towards India and Southeast Asia. But of course, by regular gameplay without even colonizing, you should be able to complete all of these missions down here in sort of this part of the mission tree. Unfortunately, as Kilwa though, there is no nation to form, so you will be remaining as Kilwa for the entirety of the campaign. But that's not a problem with these amazing national ideas. As you can see by this point in the game, I'm swimming in duck you should be making around 30 to 50 ducats income from gold every month at this point in the game later of course it will balance out once you start making money from other things this is what my army looks like 24 4 7 pretty standard for this combat with yours should look like that as well i have about 20 light ships here protecting trade in zanzibar even though that's not really needed here i'll route them over to southeast asia later and you should have a pretty sizable fleet that you'll use to transport your troops around over in this region if you're going colonial if not just focus on building a few galleys and transports that'll help you fight nations over in this region you don't really need a massive navy 
if you're not colonizing. But if you are, make sure to build one up because we will be moving troops back and forth and establishing armies pretty much throughout this entire region right here. This is what we took for our first two idea groups. If you went colonial exploration and expansion, if you didn't, you went quality economic. After going quality economic, I recommend picking up another mill idea group such as quantity or maybe offensive. You could utilize quantity pretty heavily since you'll be making so much money, you'll be able to field massive armies as well. But since technically we're a merchant republic, even though we're not really a republic, you could of course go with ludocratic ideas as well, which are also really, really nice for a nation such as us, especially the merchant, the goods produced and the development discount and stuff like that. But it's not too relevant. So that's why if you went quality, I recommend offensive or quantity after that. And for your second non mill idea group, I do recommend picking up trade because it will help you out quite a lot. So non colonial quality, economic, offensive or quantity trade. If you did go colonial exploration expansion, and then you could go with some of the other idea groups that I already told you about, such as quality, quantity, offensive and economic, but don't go trade. If you want exploration expansion, you won't really need these bonuses. You'll be getting merchants from your colonial nations and trade companies and stuff like that. This is what we took for our first four government reform. If you went with the religious conversion route, you should have gone strength in the ulama. If not, if you went like me with the non-conversion route, maintain balance of power. For tier 5, you do have some boat thingies over here, but I don't really feel like you need to use them even if you go colonial. So that's why I recommend organized military staff or military engineering. For tier 6, I recommend royal decree. For tier 7, I recommend meritocratic recruitment. If you're still colonizing for tier 8, I recommend exploitation of the new world. If you're not colonizing, you should go ahead and empower the burghers or embrace the economic theory. For tier 9, you can go with the social contract. And for tier 10 and tier 11, all of them are really good. Take whichever one you want. At that point in the game, you won't make a mistake with either one of them. And like I said, by around the time colonialism comes around, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities, or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash redhawklive, and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel, link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them, and you can become a member today and join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.